to four. Organization. Do you have a gardening problem? We can help you with that. A program dedicated to help you grow a better garden, maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make that grass look a little bit greener, as well as preserving what you grow. We're here to help you with your gardening problem. You're tuned in to Garden Talk Radio. You're listening to the most informational packed hour of garden focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Welcome. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool to find the right size for your digging projects. Visit powerplanter.com. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the program and where we'll talk gardening for the next hour. Whether you're listening to us on your radio on one of the 16 stations airing our program here in 2020 or on a radio app or through our website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com or anywhere in between. We thank you for being part of it, whether it's podcast replay or in studio video replay. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend and gardening partner. Holly Baird. You can uh, find all of our content at said website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com. And this program is for you, by you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, to grow healthier trees, and indoors and out, as well as preserving what you grow. You want to get a hold of us, you can do that by going to the email account, gardentalkradio at gmail.com, gardentalkradio at gmail.com, and you can send us your question. You can also give us a call anytime, day or night, at one 800 927-SHOW, 1-800-927-SHOW. And uh, you can find all of our social media contacts through our website. We're active on all of them. Well, we're going to get in the program. First, we're going to talk about the best ways to plant a tree. Seems common sense, but we need to go over it. There are people that uh, misrepresent tree planting. And then we'll talk about chemicals that we would not use in our garden, We'll have expert, worm expert, uh, Brian Galley will be with us, as well as he's an author. And we'll talk about, uh, and we'll get your questions answered. How about that? So let's get into the program, Holly, and let's talk about planting a tree. I mean, it seems like common sense, but I want to go over because there's a lot of people that plant trees incorrectly. And it, it's one of these things, you know, when's the best time to plant a tree? Ten years ago. When's the next best time? Right now. So we want to so, do, do it correctly. Right. So the biggest thing is first you think, okay, this is where I'm going to put my tree. However, there's a few things in that. One is you want to know how big the canopy of the tree is going to get. So you might think, okay, this tree looks good in this corner of my yard. But if the canopy is going to get 20 feet across, then and it's going to maybe shade your neighbor's yard and your neighbor might not be okay with that. That's something you want to consider. Also, and that that thought of looking up. You want to think about power lines that are above your head that the tree could possibly hit. That's right, and we and we we've done that. So we've looked up and we've we've decided what tree we're going to plant. We've looked up and then we're going to start digging. But before we do that, we don't know what's under the ground, so we need to get our underground utilities marked. It is free. Uh, you want to call in most states is called a digger hotline service, right? And they will come out two to three days. Uh, Two to, two to three business days before you, you know you want to dig, and they'll mark the underground utilities because it is illegal to dig, and then you hit a power line or a gas line or something, and you blow up, and you destroy half the neighborhood. Um, not not good. Uh, you have to get this stuff marked, and then you you would be amazed of how much stuff is actually under your yard and where and what you can and can't dig. And sometimes it doesn't even make sense of how it's. <laughs> how it's laid out so you got so you got that okay yeah so jim uh, there's a bare spot over there just run another wire that way so I we can clean everything you know, yeah yeah checkerboard yeah. it yeah so um so we got that figured out so now you want to dig your hole okay so you dug your hole and how much bigger do you want to dig your hole you want to dig your hole two to three times wider than the root ball of the tree in which you have and so it depends if you have a one gallon pot or a 30 gallon pot or a Big root ball that's wrapped up in burlap, so two to three times bigger than what that device is. And that simply allows 
for looser material to be placed back around the roots to give the root system of this tree some assistance early on in the growth cycle of it. Because it's it's very difficult for this tree. It's already gone through or it's going through a shock because you're moving it. Uh, if it's in a burlap sack, they've cut a lot of roots off. Mm-hmm. If it's in a container, uh, you're transplanting it and putting it in a new home. So it needs some loose soil in order to start maneuvering out and finding its uh, its new area. Right. So you definitely want to allow for the roots to, to explore and grow out. So th- with that being said... You do not want to use 100% compost to backfill. What you want to do is you want to use the native soil to backfill. Yeah. If you do feel that it's necessary or you think, oh, I need, I got crummy tops or crummy, crummy soil, you can go about 25 to 50% maximum compost. Mm-hmm. The reason why we don't want to fill that back, fill that hole completely with compost is that tree you want them roots to go explore, to send out roots, to establish itself, to look for nutrients. If you backfill that hole with 100% compost, that tree has realized that all the nutrients is right there and it does not need to explore. So it may be fine for a year, two years, or three years, but sooner or later that root ball has not explored. You get a big wind, a heavy snowfall, that thing tips over, and then it You've got a big hole and the tree has fell over because it hasn't got any roots. It hasn't established its roots. It hasn't established itself, right. right. There's a lot more that goes into yard work than just cutting your grass or planting a few daisies. You have to have a little passion, know a little science, and you need to be willing to keep working when the going gets tough. Make yard work a little easier for yourself. Holly and I are excited to host a Spartan Mosquito giveaway for three listeners each week to win some product by Spartan Mosquito. We will announce the winners at the end of each week on Facebook. Enter to win by emailing gardentalkradio at gmail.com. In the subject line, put winner. You must be 18 years or older living in the contiguous United States where products are state approved. Radio show and podcast listeners are eligible. For all details, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and click on the Spartan Mosquito tab at the top of the page. This week's contest ends Friday, May 29th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can claim your prize as soon as it is announced on Facebook. If you do not claim your prize within five days, we will announce a new winner. Thank you, Spartan Mosquito, for participating with the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener for this giveaway to our listeners. So you want to straighten the tree in the hole, make sure that it is um, it's standing nice and tall vertical. And straight vertical. Yep. And then you want to backfill. And then at that well, point... Well, before you do that, you want to find the face of the tree. Yeah. You want the prettiest, essentially the prettiest part of the tree facing the part of, of the area in which you're going to see or the or neighbors or the traffic will see. You put the ugly part to the back. So like it a w- Christmas tree. Like a Christmas tree, yeah, in your mm-hmm. living room. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, you want to do that. Then you want to fill the hole gently but firmly. And you we, want, if you're in a burl, if you got burlap on your thing, you want to get all that burlap yeah, off. You want to get all that wire mesh off. Remove it out of the container. Try to tease the roots out if they are root bound. Uh, you that can type even of take thing. your shovel, kind of, and yeah, tease the yeah, roots. Yeah, yeah. A garden. You're going to break some roots. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Um, and then once you have the pl- the tree planted, you want to you can mulch around the tree, but when you mulch around the tree, you don't want to take the mulch and and hug it up the trunk of the tree. Volcanic it's mulching. It's called volcanic mulching. So if it looks like there's a volcano around your tree and the tree's growing in a volcano, that's not good. You want to kind of leave a divot all the way around. Yeah, you want to cover the soil to prevent weeds from coming up and hold moisture. You don't want that bark to be up. Or you don't want that mulch to be up on the bark because no. it's going to retain moisture. You're going to encourage insects and rodents. And... You're going to have roots start growing in that area, and it's actually going to weaken the tree and, and cause the the main roots to be choked off by, I think they're called feeder roots. Um, there's a term there I'm blanking on, but the smaller fibrous roots wrap around and choke out the big, actually, roots that give the plant the nutrients that it needs. Right. So you want to make sure that you are mulching properly, and you can find lots of videos about mulching properly if you're not sure. And then as, after you mulch, you can stake the tree. The tree does not need to be tethered down. It doesn't need to be tied down. It really it's, doesn't need to be staked at it doesn't all. doesn't need to be staked at all, technically. But if you live in a high wind area and you feel that you want to stake the tree, you can. But it's not It's not a camping tent, right? So you don't need to stake it down like it might pull away in high winds. You can take something soft, whether it be um, like old T-shirts or um, even bike inner tubes or whatever, 
wrap it around the 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 um the trunk. trunk. Yeah. And then when you stake it, you want to make sure you stake it away from the root ball. Right. And, and realistically, 99.9% of these trees do not need to be staked. Go out in the woods. Tell me how many trees in the woods are staked. Well, right. But if you spend all the time in the yeah. that might make you, you know, sleep better. At night. But it, again, so it's not wrong to stake it, but you don't need to tie it tight, tether it down. Right. It's not like a TV gonna, antenna. Yeah, it's not yeah. a TV antenna. You want to give it um, some nice loose room around it. And and make sure that you don't have it tethered down. And it doesn't need to be staked no more than really six months, twelve months at the apple absolute most um, in in a year. And you want to get that removed before whatever that material is begins to grow into the bark and damage the bark itself. So hopefully that helps you when it comes to planting a tree. Uh, we learned some things when we were doing some research on this, and hopefully uh, we can all plant better trees. And whether you planted it ten years ago. Uh, or didn't plant it 10 years ago, you should plant one now, whether it's ornamental or we would suggest a fruit tree to produce for generations to come. Or even even like a, a nut tree or something. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to our show. This is our 12th show of 2020. Did you miss last week's show? We talked about four big garden myths, growing berry bushes, and your guest, our guest was YouTuber James Prigioni. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener podcast can be found at thewisconsinvegetablegardener dot com, or any on your, your your favorite podcast platform. Or we can make it even easier for you, and you just send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail dot com, and in that subject line, just put show eleven, and we will send you the link. We will be right back. Do not go anywhere. We will be talking about growing chemicals. No, well, not growing chemicals. Uh, using chemicals. <laughs> using chemicals, In yeah. our garden. And you're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, a program to help you grow a better garden, maintain a landscape, help your trees grow better, make that grass look greener, and preserving what you grow indoors and out. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. We here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardens understand that healthy soil is always the key to a successful garden. We know that chemical fertilizer burns carbon out of the soil and kills the micro life needed for a healthy soil ecosystem. No worries. Chicken Soup for the Soil by Dr. Jim's will stimulate life in the soil and supply all the nutrients most fertilizers neglect. Rather than force-feeding water-soluble chemical fertilizer, we suggest feeding the microbes a smorgasbord of 100% bioavailable nutrients that your plants can consume when they need them. Chicken Soup for the Soil is an amazing fertilizer that will increase the quality of all the fruits and vegetables you grow. Perfect for gardeners, growers, and farmers. To find out more about Chicken Soup for the Soil and other products, visit drjims.com. That's D-R-J-I-M-Z dot C-O-N. Trimbin turns any chair into a workstation. Comfortably sort your herbs, dried flowers, cannabis, and more. Easily collect pollen with a static brush and mirror finished collection tray. High walls keep your work contained. To get yours, visit harvest-more.com. Made in California. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. The Simply Solar Greenhouse is a one-piece molded fiberglass greenhouse that is easy to install and maintain. Multiple sizes available. Check them all out at migreenhouse.com. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Deer Defeat is an all-natural repellent to keep deer, rabbits, and groundhogs away from your precious plants. Deer Defeat protects your plants day and night dries clear and odorless it will not clog your sprayer deer defeat works for 30 days through rain snow and freeze safe effective and works on rabbits money back guarantee to purchase go to deerdefeat.com and use code radio to save 10 percent on your order deer defeat it can't be beat dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position step twist pull and plant visit proplugger.com Responsible watering, accurate, fast, and efficient. 
earth conscious. Visit waterhoop.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Neptune Harvest, Happy Leaf LED, Dripworks, We Grow Indoors, Deer Defeat, Harvest More, Blue Ribbon Organics, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, Chip Drop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back. How you doing? Glad to see you. You hung around. We're going to talk about chemicals that uh, we would not use in our garden. Disclaimer, we are not telling you not to buy these chemicals. We're telling you that we wouldn't use these chemicals in our garden for legal purposes. That's We're going to say that to cover us. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. It's, because, gonna, it's, it's uh, like, you know, a little asterisk. Yeah, disclaimer. Uh, just to keep us uh, safe over here so we can keep doing this, uh, this, this show. So this is ones we would not use and the reasons why we would not use them. Uh, there are going to be some uh, actual names here, and there are actually going to, there are going to be some chemical names uh, that's associated with major products that can be bought over the sh- on the shelf here. So this is a this is a common one, and actually, I don't know any city people who use it. No offense to non city people, but it's, what you talking about? What you talking? About? <laughs> it's called seven S E V I N, but maybe it's because it's a powder, and like. Maybe that's weird for city people because I'm sure there's city people yelling probably, at their radios right now. I, I use that, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, G, at Garden Talk Radio at Gmail dot com. Uh, <laughs> you can correct, uh, address to, uh, address this, that to Holly. The yeah. city person. Yeah. Here. All right. So the active ingredient in that is called carborel. It's a common pesticide. It's a powder. They, that's pretty much what it is, and you you sprinkle it on your plants. And what it does is it gets rid of common. Bugs, insects, that but are, it kills everything. But too. it kills yeah. everything. So, with that being said, you might kill bees or ladybugs, which are beneficial to your garden, and you might want to be killing something else. Um, it's a nerve agent. Yeah, it's a nerve agent. So, what it does is it basically causes neurological problems to those pests, and then they they die. Um, but yeah, you want, the thing is, is that you need to wait. There's a wait time from application to consuming vegetables. And that, between... that's on all, all chemicals, mostly right. it, that there's a, a duration which applied well, today and then you have to wait. But mo- some of them are, har- you can harvest the same day you apply. So you have to read, this is a fine print that's very important to all of us gardeners to know how long do I have to wait after applying XYZ product to control XYZ problem that I can harvest it. And when it's safe or somewhat right, safe. Right. So the wait time from application to consuming the consuming the vegetables is three to fourteen days. So if it's it's a soft skin vegetable like a tomato, you would have to wait a little bit longer. If it's a tougher skin vegetable like a squash, then you can a little can, quicker. A little quicker. So that's something you kind of have to to gauge. So, so um, it's a neo, uh, a neurological uh, mm-hmm. powder. Right. And, and you're so, applying this to the garden and most likely you're not using a respirator. So you're sprinkling this on your peas, your tomatoes, your peppers, whatever. And then you're getting it and you're ingesting it too on small microscopic uh, pr- uh, p- particles. So keep that in mind. What you're putting on the plants to kill bugs, you're probably ingesting a certain amount too. Right. For sure. And it can cause a range of symptoms if you do have overexposure. Or if you get it on your skin or in your eyes. So this includes blurred vision, breathing difficulty, abdominal cramps, muscle tremors, diarrhea, and vomiting. 
Um, and then you can even have convulsions and respiratory failure. So you definitely want to um, keep that in mind. It can kill bees, definitely. So that's the concern to me. So say even if I was like going to apply this properly, wear a mask, whatever, cover my skin, I don't want to kill bees. Right. So that's, but that's, I mean, that's your choice, obviously. Uh, the next one is uh, a, pro- a product called Preen. Uh, this is a, a, a main ingredient is a, it, it's used for, uh, to prevent weeds, essentially. Right. So you, you're applying this before you're planting. Um, so you use this like early, early in the year, maybe you, you're going to plant and then you're like, before I plant, I'm going to apply this Preen, whatever. Um, it's typically a spray. There's different kinds. It's an herbicide, so it's used for controlling the weeds. It's a spray, but also you can shake. It's a pelletized material as yeah. well. So they, but it, yes, yeah, so yeah. it's either or. But they have a number of different products, mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. varieties. Um, you just want to apply to the the affected area, affected area, whatever. Um, it can cause tumors and cancer if not if if applied to your yourself too much. Like basically, if continual use occurs. You could increase your risk of, of cancer. Well, here's the thing. These are non-organic products that we're talking about. Organic products, if used incorrectly, can cause problems not even to ourselves and to the environment. So it's not just we're knocking the chemical ones. Organic products have the same type of problems if used incorrectly. Right. So you definitely want to keep children. So for all these, basically, yeah. you want to keep children and pets away from the area that you sprayed. And yourself, um, preen is very popular for a lot of gardeners because it is applied before growing, but it is good to keep in mind um, the effects that it could have on you. We spend so much time indoors these days that when we do get the opportunity to go out, we cannot afford to have anything ruin it. The weather has started to warm up, and with warm weather comes mosquitoes. Mosquitoes have ruined your barbecue, a trip to the playground, and countless other outdoor activities. And they don't have to. Holly and I are excited to host a Spartan Mosquito giveaway for three listeners each week to win some product by Spartan Mosquito. We will announce the winners at the end of each week on Facebook. Enter to win by emailing gardentalkradio at gmail.com. In the subject line, put winner. You must be 18 years or older living in the contiguous United States where products are state approved. Radio show and podcast listeners are eligible. For all details, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and click on the Spartan Mosquito tab at the top of the page. This week's contest ends to end Friday, May 29th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can claim your prize as soon as it is announced on Facebook. If you do not claim your prize within five days, we will announce a new winner. Thank you, Spartan Mosquito, for participating with the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener for this giveaway to our listeners. Now, the next one we're all familiar with, it's called glyphosate. Well, that's the active ingredient, mm-hmm. and it's used primarily uh, for weed killing of yeah, any a, size and shape. It's a non-selective weed killer, which basically means that... You it's, spray it, it's dead. It's, exactly. Um, whatever you spray it on, it's, it's just going to kill it. And the thing with the glyphosate, it actually absorbs into the leaf structure, goes through the stem, and goes into the roots and the, and the uh, nodes of the root and kills the root as well. It sucks it all the way down, and that's the way the, the mo- molecules and the chemical is designed to be ingested by the plant and take it all the way down to the roots and kill the whole thing. So here's the thing is that you're, you are spraying it, and there's proper times to spray it. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Right. Oh, yeah, 100%. So you want to make sure you're spraying and you're following the directions, and that's with any of these. You want to follow the proper application directions and so if it's above if the humidity is above i think it's 75 percent and if the temperature outside is above 75 read the label read the label you it can become airborne and then it can drift so when it drifts it means that it can go to your neighbor's yard it can go somewhere else and and those of you who are listening in the big farm areas you know what we're talking about the 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 it, not too many more days here you're planting big fields are getting planted they come in they spray and you can hear, smell that smell, that drift, all through the area, all through the farms. And as you're driving down the road, I grew up on a farm. I know what it is. It just incorporates the whole area with that. In caps. In caps, yeah, with that smell. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So you definitely want to be aware of how you're using it. It can cause cancer. There's been some lawsuits in regards to that. Um, you can definitely look those up. And so if you use a lot of it, very, very harmful. 
um, it's a very persistent herbicide. And it's used in farming. That's, yeah. that's the main chemical used right. in field application to kill weeds with this genetically modified corn and soybeans and other crops. Not, not knocking that for the farmers. We're just being realistic if that's the chemical that's used. Right, for sure. And you can choose to use whatever you wish in your home. And the final one we're going to go through here quickly is, uh, Seth, Sethooxim, Sethooxidim, um, is also known as, as Weed Be Gone. And it is a selective herbicide. And this is used to kill broadleaf, uh, greens, basically. So, um, is it similar to 2,4-D that's a broadleaf? Yeah, okay. Okay. 2,4-D in it. Okay. Um, so you spray it in grassy areas. This is, the 2,4-D is what's prevalent in, in the chemical weed and feed. Yeah. Uh, you know, for similar. your lawn. Yeah. Very similar. So it's for those broadleaf plants. If you, maybe you're one of those people that wants to have a beautiful lawn and you want very consistent looking, uh, turf. This is what a lot of people use. This is what a lot of people use. So it's a weed and feed. I know a lot of people use it. Um, it do, it does not drift, which is I guess a good thing. A bonus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it do, it this and then glyphosate and preen. Actually, pretty much all of them can. If you live in an erosive area, an area where there can be a lot of runoff, it's going to go into the the water. It damages the aquatic mm-hmm. life in uh, the streams and rivers and lakes and and all of that that goes along with it. It's toxic by ingestion. You can bet the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardeners phone lines are always jammed during the show. So. Jo- it's toxic by ingestion, and you just want to be aware of how you're using it properly. So uh, keep in mind, those are four that we would not use. Again, you can use what you want to use on your property. Um, if you're wanting to kill weeds, we would advise to look at Green Gobbler. They've got a 20% order cultural vinegar. You can find that on Amazon. Uh, we've got ours, and it works very, very effective very quickly uh, in that uh, when it comes to uh, killing weeds uh, n- in a more organic matter. It's certified organic. So uh, things to be aware of, just things to be aware of when it comes to what you're using on your property, on your garden, on plants and vegetables that you're eating. So keep that in mind. Well, now as summer is warming up, we're getting right there, getting ready to go. Oh, uh, You want to protect your garden from various beetles, weevils, boars, including those Japanese beetles. Yeah, and what better way to prevent those pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larva? Grub Gone is an easy-to-apply granule product that can be spread on your turf to successfully control grub invaders. Developed by phylum bioproducts from a naturally occurring bacteria, Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only certain scarab pests and is safe to use around bees and insects. Yep, if you're already having beetles flying around your yard, Beetle Gone is an organic water dispersible powder that you can spray directly onto your edible plants. Find out more. Go to this website here. Find out more at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M Bioproducts. Dot com. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to have Bruce Galley. He is the worm guy. We're going to be talking about worm, worm, worm farming, uh, soil fertilization through the worms, and everything that you think you knew about worms, we're going to get educated on. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. You can bet the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener's phone lines are always jammed during the show. So Joey and Holly keep their phone lines open 24-7 to help you. Call anytime, 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-7469. Or just remember, 1-800-927-SHOW. S-H-O-W. Leave a message and they will call you back. Ship Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Ship Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come. 
which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Tree Ripe Citrus Company has top quality produce that comes right to your neighborhood with the freshest peaches and blueberries you'll find. To find locations, go to tree-ripe.com. Do not settle for the rest when you can have the best peaches and blueberries with Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Go to tree-ripe.com. For all your indoor growing needs, equipment, and supplies, it's wegrowindoors.com. Grow, 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 grow. Give your plants what they need. Neptune's harvest. Grow, oh, oh. Grow, grow, grow. Hello, gardeners. It's Anne from Neptune's Harvest Organic Fertilizers in Gloucester, Mass. Neptune's Harvest shows amazing results on everything you grow. Grow, 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 grow. With Neptune's Harvest, the results will show. Show, show, show. This ain't no jive. With Neptune's Harvest, your plants will thrive. We're not kidding. Your garden will be award-winning. Neptune's Harvest is available at your local garden center or grow store. To learn more, go to NeptunesHarvest.com. Grow, grow, grow. Neptune's Harvest. Stay tuned and you can win a gallon of Neptune's Harvest Liquid Fertilizer, a $50 value, following the commercial break. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Phylum Bioproducts. Spartan Mosquito. Dr. Jim's, Nasala Kabucha, MI Greenhouse LLC, Green Gobbler, Water Hoop, Seed Savers Exchange. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center is the place for all things gardening, vegetables, natives, herbs, containers, bulk material, whatever you're needing, Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center has it for you. They're open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, and Sunday, 9 to 3. We were there last Saturday, and we were watching the vegetables. That That's a hot commodity right now. They were disappearing very, very quickly. They've got a knowledgeable staff and everything that you need they have. If you've not been to Blue Mel's, check them out. You can go to bluemels.com. You can find them at 4930 West Loomis Road, just off of Layton in Greenfield. You can give them a call at 414-282-4220. Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool to find the right size for your digging project. Visit powerplanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Thank you for being part of the program this week. The WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for everything that we do, past shows, videos, and a whole lot more. Well, during the break, you heard from Neptune's Harvest that it's time for you to enter to win a prize package. Holly, what are they offering this week? This week they are offering one gallon fish and seaweed blend, one four-pound bag of crab and lobster shell, one four ounce yet best yet biting insect spray. Also one t shirt, one hat, two koozies, and two stickers. That's a hundred fifty dollar value. This is open to listeners eighteen years and older living in the contiguous United States. The prize will be shipped to you when it will be notified via email. And for more information, you can visit us at the Wisconsin Vegetable Garner dot com and just click on the giveaway tab to enter and all that good information. Email garden talk radio at gmail dot com. Put in the subject line enter me. And in the context box, you're going to answer this question. Are the pods that a radish plant produces when they're in green form, are they edible? Are those pods edible? Send an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Enter me, subject line, and answer that question. This contest ends Thursday, May 28th at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Good luck, and maybe you can be a winner. Well, Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for the week. Bruce Gall is the worm guy. He has over 30 years experience in raising and study, studying worms. He has also written best-selling books on the subject, one being the one called The 14-Day Worm Castings, teaching others to turn around bedding material into complete 
castings in just 14 days rather than the normal three to four months. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Bruce, thank you for being Thank you for having me. Well, let's let's start with this. Everybody gets a nickname in life. Some people like it. Some people don't. You're known as the worm guy. How did that become your title? Uh, years ago, I started pumping bait. Every time I walked in one of my locations to check on the worms and, do, you know, fill them, they'd be, there's the worm guy. So I went ahead and purchased the domain. I see. Uh, well, let's let's talk about... We always talk about on the program how important worms are to the garden. You're the expert. Why don't you uh, kind of share your knowledge of the importance of worms in gardening? Well, one is, and I know we'll probably touch on a little more, is worm castings that they produce in the soil. Secondly is, um, especially your earthworms, they uh, burrow down deeper, um, which aerates the soil, allows for um, moisture to get in. And again, while they're burrowing, they're eating and dropping worm castings all around your root system. And as they do that, they don't eat the roots, so they're not going to interfere with the root system or damage the plant. Root system or damage. So why are worm castings, or what are worm castings, and why are they so important to the soil? And maybe if you feel that you want to add some to your soil, why is it a good idea to add them to your soil? Worm castings are actually worm weight. But it's clean. <laughs> it's not smelly. You don't have any odor to it. It might have like a real earthy smell. Sometimes you go in the forest, you might numb. But the castings themselves are actually readily available plant food for one. You can absorb it immediately. Two, they're loaded with uh, beneficial microbes that you want in your garden that assist in the living organisms in your soil, as you folks already know. And they only assist to actually blossom that growth. He had beneficial microbes, and it's readily also readily uh, available plant food that the plants can start absorbing immediately. They can also be used for making a warm feed. They can water your plants with once you aerate it, uh, aerate it. Um, and you can actually, you know, during early morning hours where the sun comes up, or later in the evening, use that for morning so the sun can dry them off and they're not wet overnight. With the worm tea, pour it right over the leaves, and the leaves can actually absorb the nutrients right away, too. Now, a lot of people always say, well, I don't have many worms in my garden. Should I go buy some at the bait shop? And we always say, no, you shouldn't. What's your take on that? Should people buy worms from other environments and, and dump them into their yard and garden? No, because the ones you're going to buy, for the most part, are going to be um, composting worms, which reside towards the top of the soil. Secondly, a lot of soils they can't handle, like sandy soils or hard clay soil. Uh, one of the types you can get is Canadian nut coral. Now, if they live up, you know, all the way up in Oregon or something, you can find them naturally in a real cold environment. The ground, you could use those. Um, there is another one that some people call invasive and all, but realistically, yeah, I'll get into that later when you ask me, but Realistically, um, that is an all-round great little worm because it burrows down deep. It's actually an earthworm. Um, it can handle all sorts of soil. It can go in clay, sandy soil, anything. It survives throughout the continental U.S. no problem anywhere. If you're in a real cold climate, it will actually burrow down deep enough, and if it gets cold enough, it actually surrounds it. Itself, you know, like a mucus ball as it ties itself up in a knot and almost goes into like a hibernation state for the winter so it can survive the winter. Very, very interesting. Um, you talked about composting worms, and people always want to have a worm bin, and you said that there's specific worms for that. People just can't go in their garden, dig up some earthworms, and go, well, I'm just going to have a composting bin with these guys. It doesn't work that way, correct? It's can. I've known people that have done it. Some worms are not meant for that. They might die off or something, and some may survive. There's over 3,000 species of worms worldwide. So what looks like a red wiggler might be a red wiggler, and it might be about a dozen other different varieties of worms, unless you look at it very closely. So you could do that, but realistically, if you really want to get a worm vein and get it matured, it's going to take more than a couple of worms you got to eat. You don't know, want like a thousand worms in a regular size tub that's maybe 18 inches by a foot wide and 
maybe uh, at least a foot deep. <clears throat> and you don't have to material that deep right away as it builds up and they start eating it. So it's going to build up a bit. So it's a real compost bin. I know you want to start with this thousand, like say, wet wigglers um, would be the best for most people and probably easiest to get started with. Okay. So here in Wisconsin and other parts of the countries, in the country, there's the invasion of the jumping worms. Um, what would, and they are, they are harmful to native worms. Um, what would be something, would something like worm composting be beneficial if the jumping worms do become overly invasive? Um, actually, you know, people say they're invasive. Um, I've had them coincide with Alabama jumpers and red wiggers. I've ran in a bed in the shade so I could keep the Europeans up top because otherwise it gets too warm, you know. And, you know, in, in, in the, uh, and the, there, there was a person where there is a man in Hawaii and a couple of his wife that raised Alabama jumpers. They're called jumpers, Alabama jumpers, turkey worms, Georgia jumpers, depending on where you are in the country. Alongside red wigglers in a compost bin. Now, Alabama jumpers are hard to get started in a compost bin, but once you get to attaching new ones, it's a little easier. But he has them coinciding in his compost bins with red wigglers and Alabama jumpers side by side. This invasive thing is a fallacy. They're not invasive. They don't harm all the worms. They don't hoard all the food from all the worms. Um, it's just a fallacy that people make up so the government, be honest with you, subsidizes these, you know, tests and everything else through these government agencies. That's all it is. I mean, be honest with you, no worm hurts each other. There's only one worm that you have to be aware of, and it's called the hammerhead worm, and it looks like a hammerhead shark head on it. That one will kill other worms. That's the only worm that you do not want in the garden. Let's talk about, uh, before we uh, let you go, People, uh, when people, uh, worms are unique species, and, and what we understand, and you correct us if we're wrong, when they get into an area, they won't overpopulate themselves. They kind of know when to stop reproducing and where the balance is. Is that is that what you understand of them? No, they will keep being. Um, some, some worms will actually slow down. Each worm is a little different. Just to be a little here. They will were populated. Uh, what they do then is they start getting stunted for some reason. However, in the wild they won't because it's spread out. But in a worm bin they can overpopulate. So you will want to thin it. Um, but to give you an idea to jump for you for to earlier. The best example, talking to a scientist buddy of mine years ago when I was studying them more complex on is that worm probably has a why another gene is. And basically, the cocoons all laid out because they originate from Asian countries that go through drought seasons. The first rain will only have, say, for instance, the X gene. Then the Y's will have until the burn, and that's to preserve the worm. So they do have self preservation. However, they can overpopulate, especially if they have plenty of food in the right environment. I've had them overpopulate, but they will start getting stunted. Okay. Um, so how can we find out more about you and your worm information? Uh, simplest way is go to wormguy.com. You can get worms. You can find out um, some articles. i got more to add. Um, you can buy the books there or the e-books either way. You can buy paperback. Um Wormguide.com. Well, Bruce, we greatly appreciate coming on the program and enlightening not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country on the one of the best v, uh, things that we can have in our garden, which is worms. Oh, it is about. Well, do not go well, any. Thank you. Do not go anywhere. When we come back, it's going to be about your garden questions and our garden answers. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. You can bet the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener's phone lines are always jammed during the show. So Joey and Holly keep their phone lines open 24-7 to help you. Call anytime, 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-7469. Or just remember, 1-800-927-SHOW. S-H-O-W. 
Leave a message and they will call you back. Oh, yeah. What you say? You say Nasala Kombucha. It'll put some glide in your stride and some pep in your step. Nasala Kombucha. <laughs> yeah. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, tomatosnaps.com. ShipDrop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, ShipDrop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ShipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Seed Savers Exchange has been saving, preserving, and sharing heirloom seeds since 1975 and today continues to provide those seeds to gardeners just like you. With 600 plus varieties offered in this year's catalog and 18,000 listings on their exchange, their gardener to gardener seed swap, Seed Savers Exchange is keeping cherished seed varieties alive. Visit SeedSavers.org to request a free catalog or to purchase seeds online for this year's growing season. That's SeedSavers.org. Looking to kill weeds without using dangerous chemicals like glyphosate? An all-natural weed killer may be just what you're looking for. Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer is a concentrated herbicide derived naturally from corn. It's four times stronger than regular table vinegar, so it packs a punch against all kinds of pesky weeds. Use Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer to safely kill dandelions, crabgrass, clover, ivy, and more. It's perfect for driveways, pavers, fence lines, and other outdoor surfaces. Green Gobbler Vinegar Weed Killer is an effective and powerful herbicide, but it doesn't stop there. It's also certified for organic use, so when used properly, it won't negatively affect soil or wildlife. Since Green Gobbler's Vinegar Weed Killer is pure vinegar with no other additives, pet owners can let their pets out to play right after application. Search for Green Gobbler Vinegar Weed Killer on Amazon.com today. We offer a hassle-free money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Conserve water, save time, reduce runoff, eco-friendly. Visit waterhoop.com. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Power Planter Earth Augers, Ivy Organics, Root Maker, Pomona Universal Pectin, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Pro Plugger, Tomato Snaps, World's Coolest Floating Rain Gauge. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool to find the right size for your digging project. Visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. It's time for your garden questions and our garden answers. Holly, what do we have here? We had a question come in, and it's, we have a large property, but I wanted to simplify some gardening, and I wanted to plant lettuce in pots like you said. I have a large pot that is maybe 20 inches high or more and almost two feet in diameter. My question is, do I have to fill the whole pot with potting soil, can I just put some dirt in the bottom of the pot and save the potting soil? Also, have a compost tumbler for years, but hardly have ever used the compost. Can I use? Does that does it have to be totally composted before using it? Can I use that? The compost is stuff in the bottom of the pot. Okay, so the um, the the pro the the big container with these big containers, 
you do not have to fill it 100% full with potting soil. With a container of this magnitude, 20 inches deep, you could fill 10, 12, 13, 14 inches with that old compost. Or even to stretch it further, that bottom 8, 10 inches, you could take plastic milk jugs or plastic coffee cans with the lid on uh, and put them in there for space, to take up space, because we're not growing a deep-rooted plant. You could also take thick, heavy uh, pots, invert them to have the bottom facing up and fill the bottom of the, the, the container that way to take up airspace, to, to maximize the space you have available at the bottom with those items uh, in order to you know save on soil. Now, this does not apply to like a 10-gallon pot or a 5-gallon grow bag or a bucket. We're talking this is a deep plant, uh, deep planter, so it definitely can be done in this application. And that old compost, go ahead and throw in the bottom. Now, what I would caution you with, depending on if that compost was heat composted or cold composted, wherever you come up with, you know, if you fill that container up 10 inches high with the old compost, take a couple of layers of newspaper or a, a sheet of cardboard and just put that on top of that old compost just in the off chance that some seeds are still viable that may germinate and shoot all the way through that the remaining potting soil, and then uh, pop up into your container. So uh, that can be done. Yep, uh, go ahead and do it that way, and you will save a lot of soil uh, and money. Winter has been long, but it's finally spring. It's time to order some plants, seeds, new planter pots, and maybe a wind chime or two. Now is the perfect time to bring your garden back to life. When you get ready to work in a garden, you always forget to buy something. This year, don't let the mosquitoes remind you. Holly and I are excited to host a Spartan Mosquito giveaway for three listeners each week to win some product by Spartan Mosquito. We will announce the winners at the end of each week on Facebook. Enter to win by emailing gardentalkradio at gmail.com. In the subject line, put winner. You must be 18 years or older living in the contiguous United States where products are state approved. Radio show and podcast listeners are eligible. For all details, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and click on the Spartan Mosquito tab at the top of the page. This week's contest will end Friday, May 29th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can claim your prize as soon as it is announced on Facebook. If you do not claim your prize within five days, we will announce a new winner. Thank you, Spartan Mosquito, for participating with the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener for this giveaway to our listeners. All right, here, Holly, here's a question for you. Why did, and this came in regards to the way our garden is laid out, and you can find that on our website and and our social media platforms, why did you put your garden beds, the new raised beds that we made, parallel to the fence and, and with the front yard and not parallel to the way the sun goes over the garden? Sure. So we, so we were, when we had our in-ground garden, that's how our in-ground garden was laid out where those, uh, rows were, um, north, north to south rows and the yard runs east to west. So that's how we, why we left it like them. Also, we would not have been able to get as many in that area with that layout because of the way that the yard is laid out. It kind of tapers off towards the front. So that's why, um, we've also noticed that as long as you have a lot of good daytime sun, it doesn't matter if you run your beds east to west or north to south. It just matters that you think about where your sun is. There's going to be slight shade from bed to bed, but nothing that you would feel. It's not like it's going to be a shade tree that's going to cover, you know, 80% of the day and or 90% like, or of the day. like a yeah. house or right, a shed right. or something. Yeah. Um, so, cool question for you. I'm in the beginning stage of building a raised garden. The space that I'm using has wood chips mulch on it for three years. I moved all the old wood chips so I can put the weed block up and level the ground. Can I use the old wood chips to help fill and level the ground and then put the weed block? Uh, yes, with our with our raised beds, we did something similar. Uh, you do not have to use weed block necessarily. Cardboard will work fine, but if you already have the weed block, go ahead and use it. Um, and you know, with our beds, we're ten inches high. Uh, you and you do we you definitely want to have some kind of barrier between the soil and the bed. The wood chips you could use that as a filler at the bottom. Uh, depending on how broke down the wood chips are in the breakdown process of wood chips, there is going to be a certain amount of nitrogen that is removed from the soil in order to create the compostable, being compostable form uh, in the wood chips. So with uh, uh, depending on how deep your bed is, 
Uh, you could do that as a little filler. Most of the time, if those wood chips are on the ground for three years, a lot of it's going to be almost in a completely broke down black soil. I would go ahead and do it if you're going to have a lot of soil on top of it. You're not going to uh, really hurt the soil structure or remove a lot of the nitrogen in it that is needed for the plants to grow and health, uh, be healthy. So go ahead and do that. Uh, I, w- I would do it the, the same way you're doing it. All right, here we go. Uh, do you not have a problem with rabbits in your garden since you have no fence up around the new beds? So we did. We did have. No, we had rabbits. Well, we had rabbits at yeah. one point. We yeah. even had rabbits that uh, laid their baby rabbits, whatever they're called, um, into the the garden. At yeah, one we point. had more rabbits than you knew what to do with. <laughs> and, and, um, and things. Did, it's amazing how quickly vegetables grow when they're not getting eaten down right. every day by rabbits. Right. So. But what we did is that when we did have rabbits, so at, at the first year we didn't have a fence. I think it took until the third, third year, year where we put the chicken wire, the two foot tall chicken wire fence around the garden. But then after the rabbits started coming in, even then we would watch. We would look to see how they were getting into the yard. And then we would kind of chase them out and then we would watch them leave. The perimeter yeah, fence, the, the, perimeter. the chain link fence around the perimeter, right. they would sneak underneath it. So we would block all of that off. Most... You know, we're in an urban setting, so the, the instinct would be eradicate them, but then we wanted to see where they were coming in at so they could be prevented from coming in. So that's what we did. We didn't kill them, um, but we saw where they were getting into the garden, onto the property. Right, for sure. And if we if we were to see some sort of damage from rabbits in our, our raised beds, we can go ahead and block the raised beds out Um with chicken wire as needed. Also, uh, there's a product called Deer Defeat that works very well on deer, rabbit, and groundhog. And you can use coupon code radio at checkout and get 10% off your entire purchase. And it's an all-natural product that absolutely works. You can go to their website, deerdefeat.com, and uh, you'll be amazed at the testimonies and uh, what you what, what they can what it can do to help your plants grow better. Okay, so here's another question is we filled our, or uh, Linda wants to know, I would like to know what you put in your newly made raised beds. Is it an order of items and not just dirt? What did you put in there? Uh, we got, uh, for those people in the Milwaukee market, we got uh, raised bed mix from Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, our, our uh, independent garden center in, in, in the Milwaukee market. That's the official garden center of the radio show. We had them deliver it out to the property. Now, if you want to be more creative and, and, and save some money and not have it already pre-mixed, you can make your own raised bed mix, and it's a third compost, a third peat moss or cocoa coral, and a third of vermiculite, and you mix that all together, and then you can fill your raised beds, you can fill your containers, and even if you have a bulk material that can be delivered, this is a great way to go to save a lot of money, tons of money, if you're going to do a lot of container gardening and you don't want to have a big truckload of compost brought in, uh, you know, a bag of, of the cheap uh, grow stuff from the big box stores, like eight or nine dollars, maybe six on sale, and you need dozens of those to do a lot of containers. This is a great way to save Buku's dollars uh, by doing it your own self. That's a third compost, a third peat moss, and a third vermiculite. You put it on a tarp, you mix it all together, and you've got a great mix uh, in order to do containers or raised bed, uh, anything you have in mind. So, um, Jenny, Jenny's got Jenny's got a question Jenny's got a here. Question: You recommend ca- coffee cans for starting off squash plants and keeping the can around the base of the stem to keep the squa- away the squash vine borers. I cannot find metal coffee cans like they you know used to sell. Um, I can find plastic containers. Can I use these plastic coffee containers? What can I use? Okay, the the way we do this is. We plant the squash and then we take and cut the, in this instance, the metal coffee can, cut the bottom off and push the coffee can around where those seeds were planted, typically two to four weeks before you actually can plant the squash outdoors. Then we take the plastic lid and leave the the lip on it, but cut everything else out, and then we put a piece of translucent, either saran wrap or a plastic bag over top of it, and it creates a greenhouse effect. And then once the seed sprouts, typically about three weeks, two to three weeks earlier than normal, it'll stay in there, and then we'll vent it and, and climatize it or harden it off while it's actually in the garden, and we can get squash about three weeks before everybody else. And... It seems that the, for whatever reason, the squash vine board doesn't like to go inside of that can to burrow into the stem of the squash plant, 
which kills the plant. So if you do not have, and you can find, if you go to our website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, and search coffee can squash, you'll be able to find these videos. Uh, if you can't find a, pla- uh, a metal coffee can, plastic works fine. You we've done it with the like the cardboard coffee cans, and you end up with a, a metal ring at the end of the year. It collapses on itself very but it, quickly. It does, it does work for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. And the nice thing with the plastic or the metal, when you water, if you have to water, the water stays right there. It doesn't m- go all over the place. It goes right to the root system. I think we got time for, uh, nope, that's going to be it. We're out of time. When we appreciate yours, miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it, you can certainly do that by going to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener with the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com and clicking on the season uh, four tab at the top of the page. At the top of the page, you can uh, find all past shows on right there. You can go to find on your favorite podcast providing platform and search the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Uh, you can also send us an email at gardentalkradio at gmail dot com and we will send you the link to this show and any past shows you may have missed in season four. And by the way, we've had three other seasons of multiple contents on our website as well. Join us next week. We're going to be talking about a very important topic, which is mulching. We're going to go over several mulches that you want to include into your garden, as well as six proven slug control methods, as well as author, new author, and podcaster Jill Mashiki will be with us. Plus, we'll answer your garden questions. Until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.